Hello and thank you for joining me for another desktop review on Run Level Zero. Today's desktop, we're looking at Linux Deepin 12.12.1. Uh, one of my viewers, Mr. Jeff Turner, turned me on to this and asked me to take a look at it. So I installed it earlier this week and have been using it as my primary OS for the last four days. Um, my overall impression, I like it. It's user friendly, it's a beautiful desktop stable. They have lots of customizations. So let's get started. Uh, Linux Deepin is a Chinese made distro based on Ubuntu 13.04 and they've included a lot of customizations including their own desktop environment. In the past they've used a highly customized GNOME 3 but now they're creating their own desktop called uh, Deepin Desktop Environment or DDE. And that's just one of many customizations that they've added to Ubuntu. Uh, they have several uh, custom applications we're going to look at here in just a minute. They have a customized software center. They have D Music, Deepin Music, uh, their customized music player, as well as D Player for playing uh, media, vi videos, and such. They also have a screenshot utility and a customized uh, control panel. So we're going to take a look at all that here in just a minute. Logging in, it the, the system boots about average time. It takes 20, 30 seconds for the system to boot. Once you log in, it's going to take another uh, 20 to 30 seconds for everything to start up in the background. So it's not the fastest system to log into, but once you're there, it's pretty snappy, it's pretty quick. It is a overall beautiful desktop environment. The theming is consistent throughout the system. So looking at the desktop, you have your typical Windows-esque KDE type layout with desktop icons, a single desktop. There are no virtual desktops available in this and that's one drawback that I saw. I do like my virtual desktops and you have your launcher, quick launch icons, and your taskbar panel across the bottom. On this panel, on the far right, you do have a uh, clock slash calendar application. You have a session manager. Now this is where you're going to do all of your switch user, shutdown, restart, logout, lock, all of that's here. So don't look for a power button because you're not going to find it. It's all done from this, this icon here. You have access to your sound control, network manager, as well as your uh, notification area right here. Any system notifications will be displayed in a, they, they do show a nice pop-up. And you can turn off your notifications right here. So if you don't want to be bothered by pop-ups, you can control it. You also have quick launch to your Firefox web browser the Deepin Software Center, D Player, D Music, your file system, a show high desktop icon, and your launcher. We'll get back to that in just a moment. On the desktop you have an icon to your root file system, your home folder, recycle bin or trash folder, again the software center, as well as the Deepin user manual. This, this user manual, I, I really like it. It's probably the best user manual that I've seen on a Linux distribution. In fact, it actually shows you the, your progress as you, as you go through the, uh, the different chapters here. And I do recommend that anyone that uses Deepin for the first time, take the 10-15 minutes it takes and go through this user manual because it's going to show you the customizations and how to do basic things in Linux Deepin. Linux Deepin, I believe, is appropriate for a new user to Linux, but there is going to be a bit of a learning curve. Via this user manual, you can greatly shorten that, that learning curve, and even if you're new, you can get started and up and running in no time. So, the desktop also has two hot corners which unfortunately using GTK record my desktop those hot corners are disabled but if you tap the upper left hand corner 
you get the same effect as hitting your launcher so it'll bring up your menu now this is an icon driven system not necessarily a menu driven which you're going to see in just a moment uh, if you tap the lower right hand corner it gives you an expo very similar to what's available in the cinnamon desktop if you're familiar with that it'll just simply give you a spread of all your open windows so clicking on the launcher we get a view of all the available applications I like it what you're seeing here is all of the applications that are, are, are available it's slim but it's complete and they do offer quite a bit of variety this is in no way a bloated system so let's take a look at what you get um, like I said this is an icon driven menu system but it is categorized so you can you your 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 applications are grouped just like in a traditional menu driven system so for internet both Firefox and Google Chrome are installed you get pigeon for internet messenger Romania and Thunderbird mail is your mail client under multimedia you get Brassero for burning CDs and DVDs. D Music and D Player. Let's take a look at these right quick. These are custom uh, Linux Deepen applications, and they do what they do very well. Uh, just your standard music player and media player, but they also have the ability to convert media files. So they do have a lot of functionality in them and they are themable just with a with a uh, click of the drop down menu you can change from several pre-installed themes and uh, I like that you know I, I like my eye candy and I like being able to to customize my desktop deepen makes it very easy you may have just seen a change in the background it does have a wallpaper changer about every five minutes or so it rotates wallpaper so back to the menu here. You do not get Caden Live, Record My Desktop, or Zine. I installed those myself. Under Graphics, you have Deepen Screenshot, which is a custom screenshot utility and an image viewer. I would have liked to have seen uh, Shotwell or the GIMP installed here, but they are available in the Software Center. We'll get to that in just a moment. Under Productivity, you have two complete office suites. You have Kingsoft as well as LibreOffice. I was happy to see Kingsoft. It's still considered in, I'm not sure if it's in a beta stage yet. I, last time I checked it was in alpha. But it is a fully Microsoft Office compatible office suite. I kind of wish they would have picked one or the other. But um, if they want to introduce people to Kingsoft, which is not considered a final uh, release yet but still give you a more stable LibreOffice I, I can kinda see where they were going with that but um, still even with two full office suites I really don't they, they managed to balance it very well it, it they did it without bloating the system under system utilities of course flash is pre-installed you have language support a system cleaner the software center system monitor and they have a you a uh, customized uh, control panel here nothing special it's, it's comparable to what you're going to find in many other software centers but it is themed correctly to, to be cohesive with the system let's see you also have a utility for managing windows wireless drivers under utilities you have an archive manager compass config settings now compass is installed and I believe that's what they're using to drive the deepened desktop environment but it is a slim installation of compass is highly customized several of the options are not available here that you would see in a standard installation of compass you're not going to get your wobbly windows or your desktop cube so you know you, you do get a little bit of functionality there but it is not a full-blown compass installation uh, let's see you get your terminal gedit is your uh, text editor so yeah 
all in all, you get a wide variety of carefully chosen applications that for the most part will meet the average user's daily needs. If you need anything different installed, you can usually find it in the software center. I do like their software center. It's slim, it's fast, but it's full featured. It's icon driven, but all of your applications are categorized. So it is a modern software center. So you can get your internet applications all in one place as well as multimedia, games, graphics. Now the first time you change it, it looks like it's trying to check for my uh, my upgrades right now. There we go. Once it does that though, everything else, it tends to be pretty snappy. It tends to uh, be pretty responsive. Available upgrades will be, a, be displayed in here. You can uninstall uh, applications and you can monitor any installations in progress. One of the things I really like though is that it offers uh, search suggestions. So if I start typing in Caden, you see it offers results that are uh, matching what I'm looking for at the time. So it's a nice software center. And again, it is fully themable. So you can make it look like whatever you want. All in all, oh, let me show you this. This was something else that was pretty cool. From your menu, you can right click on any icon. You can hide it, open it, send it to the dark dock, add to auto start, or send an icon to the desktop. I'm going to send Firefox and Chrome to the desktop because there's something else you can do here too. You can see where I just added them together to the desktop. You can actually drag and drop one icon onto another to create an app group. You can then rename that. We're going to call it Browser. And now when you click that one icon, it'll show you the icons available in the group. I thought that was a really, you can ungroup or delete them, but I thought that was a really neat feature. Now let's talk drawback. Uh, there were a couple of drawbacks to this. Uh, one, there was a bit of a learning curve. But more importantly, uh, this is a Chinese-made distribution. So its native language is Chinese. They do offer, obviously, an English version, but it seems like their English uh, translation of the operating system is not entirely complete. I did get a couple of system warnings that any of the warnings that popped up were in Chinese so I really didn't know what they were saying. That said, I did not experience any crashes on the system. Another drawback was in their software center. It looks like their repositories are not entirely complete. When I went to install Caden Live, for example, I, it failed to do it because the 64-bit version was not available in the software centers and the repositories, so I had to install it from source. Now being based on Ubuntu, you do have the Ubuntu forums at your disposal, so should you run into any problems, you should be able to find a solution there. But one of the things that I found kind of lacking was support on the website. Um, the, their website is visually appealing, but say let's go to the forum and we'll open up the wiki as well. The forum has some things available in, uh, in English so if you run into any problems I suggest you go here first because if you go to their wiki anything that you try to find on their wiki is all going to be in Chinese. So the form is the place to go for support. Avoid the wiki. So my only other complaint is it seems like the English language support for the for Deepin is not yet complete. Hopefully they'll fix that in the future. But it was not enough to put me off of the operating system. I had an overall very good experience with it and it is something that I would recommend you try. So go ahead and give it a try. Let me know what you think. 
Uh, this has been N at Zero for Run Level Zero. Uh, please don't forget to give me your questions, comments, or emotional outbursts. Subscribe, like if you like it, and uh, thank you for joining me for another video. I hope to be with you again soon.